Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, November 1st, 2024. Welcome to November. Welcome to the college football edition here. We got three college football games on Friday night all coming your way right now. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome, guys. It helps out the algorithm. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up, 7 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. All of these nationally televised games. 48 being the total. Minus seven in the hook. That's the Yukon Huskies as the home favorite. This is an interesting handicap, guys. Um, first off, UConn, their sixth straight home game. Combine that with the fact it's Georgia State's third straight road game. Man, this schedule spot is a tough one for the Georgia State Panthers side. They've lost four straight games. They have not covered on the road all season long. It's short week with travel. A bunch of Southeast kids heading to the Northeast. I don't like this spot at all for Georgia State, guys. In UConn, they've been good at home. They've been cashing some tickets. Their defense has actually been playing really well. 25% on third down is all they're letting up. Uh, they looked good last week against Rice. And their head coach, Jim Mora, you know, that NFL pedigree, rushing offense, 41 rushes on average per game, just under 200 yards a game on the ground. And matchup-wise here against the Georgia State defense, the Panther defense gives up more than 210 rushing yards per game. So I think UConn's just going to smash it down their throats here. Combine it with the fact that UConn, um, the schedule spot here, playing at home, Georgia State being on the road, three straight games. And UConn, uh, with a win, they they guaranteed bowl game. Uh, so all of that, seven and a hook here, guys. I don't love the hook on the seven, but still, I think the UConn's the side. I think they win by double digits. So let's lead off with the Huskies over the Panthers. UConn over Georgia State, CBS Sports Network, 7 p.m. That's the way we're playing that. 30 minutes later, we're heading down to the Sunshine State here. USF and FAU, that's South Florida at Florida Atlantic. 49 being the total, the Bulls of USF laying minus two and a half to the... <laughs> Owls of FAU. All right, USF just three and four on the season. They're 0 and four against the spread, their last four, but they are off of a bye week. So, kind of regroup here. A lot of the USF issues have come on offense due to their quarterback injuries. They're, they're starting quarterback, Byron Brown. You watch him play, he's a dual threat guy. He's a really good college quarterback. I mean, this is a USF team that played Alabama tough for what, like three quarters? That score looks a lot worse than it was. They also played Miami pretty tough for a good portion of that game. I think they're the much more talented team. And off of the bye week, look, I, I don't blame what their head coach, Alex Golsh, um, for not giving out information. He, they did say he did suit up for some practices. But look, it's a competitive advantage not to let your opponent know who's playing quarterback, particularly when it's a situation like this, like their starter, Brown, He's a dual threat guy, whereas their backup, Bryce Archie, he, he, he doesn't run much. So therefore, it gives the defense, you know, unknowns of what to prepare for. So I get it. It just makes it tough as a sports better. I kind of lean towards off of the bye week if he's going to play here down the stretch of the of the regular season. I, I mean, now's the time to do so, particularly because you need wins. And lo looking at this market, I mean, minus two and a half, the odds makers are telling this is his you know, projected to be a competitive matchup and a possible win for USF. Talking about the bye week, for whatever reason, USF has been money with extra preparation time. Seven of the last eight times off of a bye week, they have cashed a ticket. They're also 15 and three straight up as a road favorite. Like those trends towards the Bulls. FAU, um, I guess if you're looking for positive towards the Owls, they did win last year, 55 to 14, absolutely blowing out USF. That was a head scratching game. I remember that one. Um, they have lost two straight, though, this year. More importantly, you know, this season, they lost to UTSA uh, by what, two touchdowns? They also lost to, uh, to North Texas in a tight one. Todd Herman, he is 22 and 10 as an underdog. Uh, some of that obviously coming at Texas. I just think USF's the stronger team, guys. I really do. And if Brown is behind center, uh, they're the bet for me anyway. Now, granted, it's going to move the line, but it's one of those things, you know, watch watch social media. Uh, the, the blog guy for USF, I forget his name, but when I see it, I'll, I'll retweet it on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. You know, he's usually down there uh, kind of 
recording USF in their in their pregame. So if we see Bryce, uh, if we see Brown out there, you know that would definitely be a bet on situation. So overall, guys, I like USF minus two and a half. I think they go to Boca Raton here. There does look like wind in the forecast in South Florida, fifteen to twenty mile an hour winds. Something to note, but uh, yeah, USF minus two and a hook for the show. Got one game left. We're heading out west. First reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm, guys. Anything is welcome. I know we had a couple losing days, just giving some away of that uh, long run. But, uh, hey, we'll be back on Saturday and Sunday, college football Saturday, NFL Sunday shows. So come back and join us on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. All right, we got 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific in Boise, Idaho. We're heading to the blue turf here. This one on Fox Sports 1, the nightcap for Friday. It is San Diego State and Boise State. 57 and a hook being the total. Boise State minus 23 and a half point favorites. Boise State, first off, you know, they just played arguably their biggest game of the season against UNLV and won that game. So they're in the driver's seat here for the group of five playoff spot. Um, They're likely to be heavy favorites the rest of the way in the regular season get into the Mountain West Championship game, and then if they win that, they're they're going to most likely be the group of five candidate in the playoffs. So they still have a lot to play for. Um, there is a couple things a, a little bit worrisome. One, the spot. You know, yes, they're coming home, but they're off of that big game against UNLV. And they're, they're running back Genty. You know, he's in the Heisman hopefuls, if you will. He only had 128 yards versus UNLV. That's a down game for him. Um, But this is still a a rushing attack that is averaging just under seven yards per rush. Uh, Last week, it wasn't the case against UNLV. They were ready to go. Some of my takeaways, is they they are just one in three against the spread after playing UNLV, after going to Las Vegas. It's almost like one of those things in hockey, like the team that just played Vegas, the game after is not as good. But in hockey, I I think it's a little bit different. I I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but, you know, professional athletes, they could kind of hang out in Vegas, maybe be a little hungover. College football is usually not the case. You kind of just take a shower and get on the on the airplane back home. But I did want to throw that out there. The matchup wise here is <clears throat> San Diego State is actually playing better football of late. They're 2-0 and in the Mountain West. I mean, they're under 500 overall, but against Mountain West competition, they are 2-0. and They've covered four straight. They're playing better football. They got a first-year head coach in Sean Lewis. You might remember him at Kent State. He runs that really fast offense. He was also the offensive coordinator uh, for at least a portion of the year last year in Colorado. They actually almost beat Washington State outright. You know, but a lot of people probably didn't have their eyes on that game. They were 17 point underdogs. They could have won. Uh, I was right there close. <clears throat> They're going to have to stop this Boise State rushing attack, though. And it's a big question mark here, guys. However, going on the Aztecs, you get the 23 and a hook. San Diego State is 5 and 0 against the spread in Mountain West Conference play as a double digit dog the last five times doing so. They're also three and one against the spread the last four years against Boise State. So they've kind of had their number if you've been betting on them, including last year. Um, they were they were going off as the underdog and they only lost by a field goal, 34-31. And they slipped through the back door last year, you know, come, come in scoring a touchdown late. Um, I could actually see that happen again here, guys. Uh, you know, a bad beat. And a backdoor cover are not necessarily the same thing, even though a lot of people, you know, still haven't kind of grasped that concept. That's got to be part of the handicap here. And San Diego State can move the football. Hey, they're playing better. Catching 23 and a half. I don't like this spot for Boise State, guys. Let's go with the big underdog, the Aztecs, San Diego State plus 23 and a half against Boise State. So that's going to do it for the Friday show. We'll be back with the Saturday show. So come back and join us at San Diego State plus 23 and a half. USF, the Bulls, minus two and a hook. And we got UConn, minus seven and a half as the home favorite. I'm Drew Martin. Checking out, guys. Smash that like button, comment below. We'll be back tomorrow. Cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.